modular things that hold results in one end and at, at one, in one part structurally in the XML and the metadata about the procedures that are run to produce the results as part of that test measurement um, in other containers. And so I'm just going to show you now is the Atterberg Limits test container and all the stuff that's in it um, and what, what we can carry in digs. And this is an example for the other tests as well um, because cer certain things are are, um, um, are standardized among all the tests and other things are very unique just to um, the particular procedures like Atterberg Limit. So um, uh, each column here identifies the thing called a property name, which is effectively the field name. So if you want to talk about the data dictionary, what the, what the, what the field is called, um, a description of it. Um, some of these are filled out. Some of these still need to be, be populated. Um, others probably won't be populated because they're intuitively obvious. Um, the data type, what type of information that, that, that is, and I'll explain a little bit about that. Whether the field is required or not, and this multiple is whether you can have more than one of them. In other words, um, it's possible in some cases to have more than one of that, of that property um, in, the, in the file. Um, if there's a unit of measurement, what type of measurement, what type of units of measurement those are. <laughs> Hello? What was the laugh about? Oh, then, sorry. Um, uh, and then the property type, if it when it has when it comes down to the actual result. So this actually concatenates information from the schema with an external file that holds all of the test results that we're currently um, uh, managing in digs. And that those that test results file is a is one that's easily modifiable as we as more tests develop, as more test results. Um, get generated. We don't need to um, structurally change the schema. We just add a definition to this file and then it becomes usable within digs. All right, so the Atterberg limits test, uh, you can you can have a field description, uh, quality control status, and then a remark. And if you look at this remark property, the type is a thing called a property type. And what that basically means is that it's um, a complex series of other fields. And it's, in other words, it's sort of like pointing to another table with other information. So uh, when you have a remark about the Atterberg limits test, that remark property type actually consists of a whole series of other fields. The, the content, which is the actual remark itself, um, a reference to who made the remark, the author or the actual name of the person as a string, and then the date and time that that remark was made. And if you look over here on the remark property, it shows that there are multiple remarks allowed. So you can have multiple of these remark properties on a test. Um, there, there might be notes or things that come from different folks as tests or, or as these procedures are done. And th that can all be added in that, in that remarks, in this remark property through this, this remark property type, this chunk of other fields that are here. Um, hey, Dan. Yeah. Hey, Dan. You, yeah. Can you zoom in that Excel spreadsheet so we can see it on the projector? We've got a really small. Is this, is that better? We're getting there. Let's make it big. Well, it looks like you're way behind me in terms of up. how fast things get. Is this better? I got to scroll up here. Let me. Uh, that's, yeah, that's readable anyway. Fair hey, if I go full screen, better. that might help too. I don't know if that helps you also. Can you read this now? Is it better or do you need it bigger? You can make it a little bit bigger, but that's a whole lot better than it was. Okay, I can. I think I can add whatever percentage they allow me here. It's the the standard thing is. Oops. Okay. Let's try three hundred percent. It doesn't seem to want to take the number. That's bizarre. Ah, okay, there we go. How's that? <laughs> hey, we can actually see it now. Yeah. Okay, so let me. I'm just gonna. Scroll up to the top here and just show you. So the first column is the name of the field, effectively the description, um, the, the the type of data that that is, whether it's required field. And you see most fields are, are actually not required. In fact, you're not required to have a remark. But if you do have a remark, you are required. The remark has to have some content. It has to have some value in it, for example. That's why um, the uh, required field is yes for the content field of the remark property type. Okay, 
But again, this is a container that's held within this remark property in digs. And as the the uh, multiple column says, you can have more than one remark. Um, and this is actually something that's standard for every every test procedure, whether it's an in situ test or a lab test. Um, they all allow for all of these fields on top here, or these initial fields are all there, are always there. You can always have a remark. You can always have a description. If it's a laboratory test, um, there are fields that allow you to define the initial specimen conditions, so how the sample was prepared for the test, and also the final specimen conditions if um, that makes sense for the test type. So. Uh, triaxial test, for example, you you might report on the final volume and 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 final water contents and that sort of thing. Um, so again, this initial specimen conditions is a uh, a property type. So there's a whole bunch of fields that are reported for the specimen conditions, and that's what this group here is: the specimen conditions property type. So um, again, you can even have a remark about that. Um, you there's a mandatory reference to the sample so again things are modular and dig so that when you talk about a sample or a specimen coming from some place at some depth that information is recorded elsewhere in the digs file um, and this sample ref is essentially the it's like the foreign key in a database that points to the sample that this this lab specimen um, derives from um, the uh, uh, the type of specimen is a um, is a um, enumerated list the specimen type um, that would identify whether it's an intact specimen remolded um, uh, disturbed and the like um, specific descriptions about the specimen it's the dry weight wet weight height diameter length width if it's a cubic if it's a cylindrical sample you would have a diameter value if it's if it's um, has a length and a width. If it's a cubic, a cube sample or a rectangular sample, you would define it there. Um, its volume, and then for liquid samples, um, things like the dilution factor and and how what sort of leachate was was made when it was done. And then there's a catch-all uh, uh, property here called other specimen property. And what this is is a way to add additional information about the specimen. In a, in a way that is um, searchable and dis discernible, but doesn't have any um, uh, specific meaning. Um, so, for example, if if you were wanted to care about reporting the tear weight, for example, or an initial uh, identifier for a for a sample container or some other types of information about the specimen type, you could I, you could put it here under this other test property. Um, and that is a parameter property type, which is this piece here. And basically, it, it has three um, uh, values: the name of the parameter. So you could say something like, you know, tear ID, the parameter value, which would be the the the, the ID of the parameter, say number two. And then if there are units of measure, you would identify that there. So it's basically a name a series of name value pairs that could be optionally entered. Um, if a particular lab wants to report that information and it's in a structure in the right place in digs, but it doesn't have a, a the, the parameter name, for example, isn't necessarily controlled. So it doesn't have any um, it doesn't have it doesn't have the same type of um, I shouldn't say value. It's got reporting value, but it's not information that could be readily processed because there's no guarantee that it's always going to look the same. Uh, for different uses, it but it's a way of, of reporting additional sorts of things. But for an Atterberg limit test, basically the only thing you really care about is the weight of the sample anyway, for the most part, and that's all that would be filled out. But this is the types of information that every laboratory test specimen can can carry, uh, regardless of what is actually done to the specimen. All right? Hey, Dan, uh, now we get into the stuff.